Okay, well, we're back with this computer control quadra jet for part two. And um, we've got the top air horn off of it now. So we're going to take a look inside this, and this is going to be pretty interesting. The top comes off just like any other. You can look back in my other videos if you need to and see how that works. The top really doesn't look much different. We've already seen that some stuff before. But here's where things are going to get definitely different on these. Let's take a look at what we have in here. You'll notice right away there's some things in here that don't look like what you would see on an older quadra jet. And I'm going to explain what they are. Now this over here, this is the TPS I was telling you about. This is just simply a little switch here, sensor. Kind of just pushes in where it normally sits there with the air horn on it sits flush with it but it's got a little plunger on it that depresses we can do that a little differently so you can see better see how that works that's what operates your TPS and it operates off if you look on the air horn um, right there that's what operates the uh, TPS that, see that little circular thing there and that's the other end of that is right here so when the arm for the accelerator pump operates it pushes on that and that's how the TPS does its thing and this just normally just you can just pull these right out and replace them if you need to like that little spring in the bottom of it kind of keeps some preload on it this is your accelerator pump bore with a spring that's the same as the old ones take a look right here now I had a brain fart in the other video I couldn't remember what these things were <laughs> but uh, this is your this is the kind of complex operation of the primary side of the carburetor this is your little I don't know what the word is for this but this operates your these are the ends of your primary uh, metering rods and they're kind of spring loaded if you push on it with your finger until it's got a spring on it um, and this little hanger this is just a separate little device here it's got a little fine little spring on it keeps it kind of spring loaded that one's got a link broken out of the spring but what this is is a mixture control solenoid and you'll see how this moves up and down it gets down to it pushes down on those meter rod leans them out that's lean and then it comes rich up rich now I'm going to try to explain this as carefully as possible but this operates this electromagnetic and it's just basically it cycles them like this very quickly quicker than I can do that and I told you there's a couple adjustments on this and normally they advise you not to adjust them but sometimes you have to if you just can't get it to run right otherwise and these what it is this is they have a lean stop adjustment and a rich stop lean stop is down that's that's this right here where my thumbnail is so it's got a little square tip on it you can screw this in or out and this controls how far down the metering rods go on the lean side and then when it comes up you'll notice that's kind of see that's kind of shiny right here point at it right there looks like it's been contacting something while it has I look on the air horn you peek in here it's kind of hard to see but you have a spot right there where that's been touching and we look on the outside of where that's at and it has a plug out here that's the top of this so and that's the top of where that 
square is right there for that adjustment so you see what i'm saying you can access these from the outside of the car where you don't have to pull the air horn off to adjust those gm never wanted you to rochester said you shouldn't ever have to but you can't access those you can take those plugs out that's uh that's lean stop that's rich stop that basically adjusts how far up that comes so like i said i'm not trying to be 100 percent uh, precise about explaining all this because we're just doing an overview but you just pull this off at the sole put it to the side and then you can take this blocker I'm going from memory here take this filler out for that and you look down in here now you still have the same kind of needle and seat as any quarter jet and a float but you also have this assembly here, which presses in at your mixture control signal. It's just a press fit. I lied to you. I said it's a press fit. It's not because it's got a screw right there. I'm telling you, I don't remember as much as I think I remember sometimes. So let me get a screwdriver here that'll fit. We'll spin that out. And then it's kind of one handed. Sit you down for a second. Okay. I just remembered something also. Like I said, it's been a while. You're probably like, why didn't you remember this stuff when you started making a video? Well, sometimes you have to, I'm the kind of person, sometimes I have to have my hands on stuff to, to remember exactly how it goes. Cause I don't, a lot of times I don't read instructions very closely. So I remember now you have to take this uh, rich stop to get this assembly disassembled. You have to unscrew this thing and you measure what it is when you, if you take it, when you take it apart, I remember this now. You have to count the number of turns. You back it out. Remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So you're going loosey with it. So you're going to back it out. And not always just finger tight like this. And count your turns. And pull it out. Pull the screw out. That's what that is. See how finally find the threads are on that. If you can see that. And then this assembly should come right out. There we go. That is mystery thing number two in this carburetor. And I call it that. I'll try to be simple about it, but that's where it goes right there. So that's this is a mixture control solenoid assembly. These are also replaceable. So that's what this what cycles. The solenoid cycles up and down in quick succession, and that's what cycles operates this thing. That's why it's got a spring on it, like I've shown you. Let's see, these are spring loaded. These look a little bit different. I'm not going to pull these out, but they look a little bit different than the old style versions. You can see down in there. But they do come out. You just have to have a it's got a double flat on one on each side on that bottom down there. That's how you that's how you pull those out. So, like I said, I'm not going to be very I'm not going to go into every little detail, but I'm basically, like I said, I'm just trying to show you the theory of operation on these so you understand it. Because a lot of people don't, and I used to be in that category myself, like I said in the other video. So that's see your your your. Electronic assemblies come right out of here. You can replace those if you think one's bad. So essentially what this does, like I said, this is your solenoid. This thing moves up and down. And the whole idea, like I said, is to move these 
rich, lean, rich, lean, rich, lean, rich, lean, rich, lean, um, you know, as fast as possible. I mean, probably a space of milliseconds, it's up and down. And that's supposed to, like I said, more precisely control emissions, according to the theory. And they do usually get pretty good gas mileage, but these things, I'm telling you, these things, when they're out of adjustment or something, when the cell, the TPS went bad or or the mixture control solenoid failed or something like that, which was known to happen, um, they can run pretty bad. So, but at least now you can get into one of these and know what you're looking at. So, if you got to replace something or you rebuild it, and they're not hard, any harder to rebuild than a, a standard quarter jet. Once you know what you're looking at, you just put this back in where it goes here. Fit that part back in there. Let's get it all the way there. Just fits right in there. Make sure you got it straight here. Okay, and then you want your in. Just take this. Screw it back in. Counter turns. Now you get you in the ballpark. So, so yeah, that's what you're looking at on the inside of one of these. <clears throat> it's not that mysterious, is it? And of course, if you had to replace your TPS, you simply slip it back in where it goes. Make sure the spring is in there. It is so it's not quite as bad as you thought huh you just got two little two little electrical devices in here you got a couple adjustments you can make and once you do that you ought to be able to fine-tune one of these now you can the Google do Google's got some good resources on how to tune one of these I'm not gonna get into that because actually I never I never got into trying to fine-tune one I just did the adjustment to the TPS and um, just set it back to factory specs and it always seemed to work well but if you're the kind that likes to um, do that kind of thing then by all means and I want to show you something also kind of interesting give you a little backstory here real quick um, I used to be active on an Oldsmobile board, which is not there anymore, and I'm not going to tell you the name of the board because it's been taken over by spammers and viruses and stuff like that, so you don't want you to go there. But I used to be pretty active on that board for a long time, and once upon a time, I got into a debate with someone on that board about these quadrajets, these computer-controlled quadrajets, exactly like this one. In fact, I used this one as an example then. And this guy was one of these self-style gurus, you know. He's one of those that anytime he's on a web forum of some sort, internet forum, he's that guy. He's the one that answers every question possible, um, you know. And he knows enough to get by. But he answers every question possible. And, you know, what happens is by sheer virtue of the volume of his responses and his presence on there, people start to people start to look up to the, this person, whoever it is, as being an authority on things. And then, you know, lots of times people that are there participating in the forum, um, they probably actually know more than that, that person does, but they don't ever share it because they're tired of people questioning them, you know, because it always seems to happen. But anyway, so this person was on there, and he was a, he was a 307 Oldsmobile guru. He was a seen as such on the board and I looked at a lot of his responses and he was right a pretty good bit of the time on the things he said uh, but he tended to kind of just repeat the same information nothing earth shattering but anyway me and this guy got in a debate it started out as a friendly kind of a debate you know and he he was on there and I, I well I actually wasn't talking to him directly but I said something on there. I said, you know what? I said, how many of you guys would believe me when I tell you that these quadrajets are 800 CFN castings? 
And he jumped in, you know, posted a response pretty quick. He said, oh, no, no. He said, they're, they, they're not 800 CFM castings. There's no way. No, they're not. He said, they go on a small engine. There's no way. And I said, well, I said, I hate, hate to beg your pardon, but they are. I said, I know. I'm looking right at it. I've got one. He said, oh, no, 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 no. You're wrong. I've seen plenty of these carburetors. I've never seen, I've never yet seen an 800 CFM computer control quadra jet. And I told him, I was, uh, you know, I was getting kind of irritated at that point because I know what I'm talking about. You know, if I'm looking right at the thing, you know, I'm not stupid. I know what I'm looking at. And I told him, I said, look, pal, I said, I know some of the Chevy versions were 750s, and they were. I said, but this one I've got in front of me, and every other one I've looked at in the last week or month or so has been an 800. I'm sure of it. I said, you want me to put pictures up? And he said, He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. You just put pictures up. He said, I, I believe this when I see it. I believe this when I see it. So I said, okay. So you guys can look with me. First off, we're going to look at the carburetor number. I'm turning you sideways here. Look at this carburetor number, which is, I'm going to look through the camera, see if I can do this. So we can all see it together. Okay. The carburetor number is 1708 See that? 1708-2253. That decodes to a 1982 Oldsmobile 307 V8 engine. Alright, well, I showed him that, and then I showed a picture of this. Look down in here. Get the camera over here. That'll help. Look at that wall right there. Look at that Venturi ring at, on the side. You see that bump right there? Now, anybody knows these quarter jets knows that's an 800 CFM casting. It's not no 750. And that proved it beyond a shadow of doubt. And that guy got so mad about that that I've proved him wrong. And I'm not a person that tries to prove people wrong, but if I know what I'm talking about, I'm going to stand up for it. That made that guy so mad that, I mean, he'd even had his girlfriend and his brother try to bash me on this board to prove I was an idiot. So, like I said, he got so mad he ended up leaving. I mean, he didn't outright leave, but he wouldn't, he'd hardly ever come back and post anything because it made him look bad. And I wasn't trying to, but you know, if you doubt somebody knows what they're talking about, then you better watch it because you're going to get burned. So that's what happened. So that proves anybody that asks about that, these are definitely, at least the old versions are 800 CFM castings no matter what they're on. So, I'm going to button this thing back up, guys, and in the last video, we're going to look at the secondary side of this carburetor, and we're also going to look at how to adjust these idle screws. So, I'll see you there.